this is my second piece, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we have been very lucky this webinar to be sponsored by a fabulous Sydney company grower of beautiful Australian natives. So I have been given the privilege to actually showcase some of the beautiful Australiana here in New South Wales and a wider um, area as well. So working through these beautiful flowers, um, I'm going to put them in a beautiful little design. East Coast Wildflowers is mainly a Sydney-based wholesaler that um, supports florists, TAFEs, and all of the floral art groups in New South Wales, um, and provides them with seasonal Australia, Australian-grown flowers. And this is a little taster of what's to come. We've got the beautiful summer range here. So just eclectically put together in a little vase, but I will be arranging these. Now on the webinar, we are going to give you all of the botanical names and the common names. So if you miss me quickly saying what it is, and I'm gonna say them very quickly because botanical names, as we all know, don't necessarily roll off everybody's tongue. So we have got the beautiful flowers here, but we will give you the full details as we go through and in front of you on the screen later on. So when I opened these beautiful, this a box of beautiful natives, I went, how do I showcase these wonderful materials? You can see just by the size of the vases that I've got in front of me, the stems are quite short. So that is sometimes a problem when you do pick materials from the garden, you do have materials given to you, you don't know quite how to showcase them because the stems are so short. So, the water source that I was thinking of is um, a tube, a little water vial. Um, now, here in Sydney, we have a beautiful shop called Reverse Garbage. This is a fantastic shop that actually takes products that would ordinarily go into landfill, but they put it into a big warehouse and the general public can go in and buy small amounts of these commercial products or um, merchandising sort of uh, display items. And we can just buy the one or the two. We don't need to buy large amounts. So one fortuitous trip there, I found, and I'm gonna gently tip it up so that you can see, these wonderful brown water tubes. Now, this came in all just like this, but in a large rectangular case. And I just like the way that they're, um, they're flat form all sat beautifully in the, um, the packaging. So all I've done is taken out the water vials from their packaging and placed it on a thin piece of um, PVC or MDF um, and glued them. So I used hot glue to actually secure the water vials onto the base and obviously filled them all with water so that um, the waters have the the, um, the flowers have got something to drink from. To actually um, give me some height, um, I used the, um, the, the dried vines of a palm tree and that gave me some lovely movement rather than creating a static line that would actually be quite flat. It also gave me some support. Um, the beautiful flannel flowers sometimes um, are a little bit delicate and they sort of tend to sort of have a droop to them, but this framework higher than the water tubes will actually give me some height to the design. So we've got a graduating height going down to the level of the water vials. You can also see that I've put some twine around the base of the water vials here too. Now my thought process for this would be that the, um, the lower area of the water vials looked a little bit stuck. Um, so in order to break that up, some uh, lines of twine um, around, which emulate the same color of the, um, the fluorescence, the dry fluorescence, they actually, it's repetition of color and form. So 
what we've got is this beautiful um, circular shape with our water source and the fluorescence I've actually placed them not in the water vial but between the water vials um, and the reason why I've done that before um, I started the, the session or the, the description of this is because they fitted so perfectly I didn't want them to move <laughs> so that was all in place if I placed them um, when I was doing the demonstration I might not have put them back in the most perfect place and they were in the most perfect place to start off with one of the misnomers about working with Australian natives um, is people think that they are colorless they don't have they're not bright they're not a vibrant color so people say they're dull and they're not very interesting can I say that this, I've just put this together, and it's the most bright, vibrant, freshest combination of beautiful materials. I've got some wonderful banksias. Now, the variety of banksias. Today, I'm going to be showing you about four or five varieties of banksias. All of them are available in New South Wales and through East Coast wildflowers, only at certain times of the year. Um, you can tell a banksia by the serrated edge. It looks like Mother Nature's got a pair of scissors and taken it to each of those leaves. I will be saving these leaves. Again, we never throw anything away. <laughs> so I will be saving these leaves and you can actually use those on another design because they hold their form and they just dry out and look so fantastic on various other um, little objects that you can cover. So I will be saving those leaves, but I don't need as many in this design. So I'm going to, to use my banksias through the design to create that colour pop. I do like a little bit of yellow. It's um, the Pantone one of the Pantone colours of the year. So um, it's a very popular colour and you'll see it all the way through the year. Being a February demonstration, throughout the whole year you'll be seeing a lot of yellow in architecture, in art, in fashion, in homewares. So I was really rather lucky when I actually saw that I had yellow banksias in the Magic um, sponsored um, box. So placing the banksias close together to give a little bit of height at the back of the design. Again, I'm going to make this all round, but um, it will probably um, be a little bit more interesting from this angle with the height at the back here. To get a bit of distance between the banksias, I'm going to place um, this banksia down at the front here. So there's a bit of distance between the group and the secondary area. Now, what was I thinking of doing next? We have Muller Muller. This is, um, and again, got a fabulous Australian name. I did take the elastic band of this one, but it kept it together. The variety that we have here is a very short stemmed variety. They can do, they can get up to um, a long stem. You, it's almost, you almost have to t um, touch these. They are so velvety and furry. They're like little um, teddy bears. And I'm going to cluster them together. A lot of Australian natives um, work well when they're grouped so that they create a little bit of strength in numbers. I'm going to move that around. placed the water vials so closely together, it's almost like I have flower foam because I've got water, um, the water access in every single area. So it doesn't matter where I place my materials, I can, I will always have a little water vial there. I'm sure a lot of you out there will have seen and, and got lots of beautiful little materials in the garden. 
But when you bring them into the house, you don't quite know what to do and how to display them. So by having um, little water vials attached to a base, hopefully this will give you an idea of something that you can replicate and um, repeat yourself. So continuing the mulla mulla in little clusters through the design means that your eyes are taken through the design. And the banksia and the mulla mulla have a very similar form. So continuing those in a different area. We now have some, um, I'm now going to use um, the paper daisies. And again, beautiful fresh paper daisies that haven't quite burst open, even though this weekend in Sydney happens to be in the middle of a heat wave. So um, I'm very glad that I didn't choose to use beautiful um, Sydney roses and beautiful gentle materials that we can also get within the Sydney markets. Um, and all of the Australian growers within the Sydney area are producing wonderful fragrant roses for our Sydney brides at the moment. But it is rather warm for a rose this weekend, so I'm very happy that um, I've got some wonderful Australian natives to work with. They're just absolutely fabulous. They've got a beautiful little bud attached to the one stem. The, the little paper daisies that open up, they will last, they will actually dry and hold their form. So um, a floral artist dream flower it's one of my favourite materials to work with, um, just because of its versatility and its longevity, um, it's, and it's rather beautiful. So I think it's uh, a wonderful flower to actually have at our fingertips here in Australia. You might have noticed that I've got a very clipped Australian accent. Um, that's because I, I, don't, I wasn't actually born and raised here. <laughs> I actually originate from England, so um, I've actually fallen in love. Um, well, I fell in love with an Australian first, but I then fell in love um, with this beautiful country um, and all of the native flora and fauna that uh, is available to us here. So um, if you think that that's not a true Australian accent, it's not. <laughs> so... Um, it's it's um it's a it's a good old British accent. So, but uh, I've been here, and this is my anniversary today. Sixteen years in Australia today. Oh. I landed. Now I only know this is because it's my niece's birthday, and um, so my niece was supposed to have been born a few days ago. So I was going to meet her before I got on a plane to start my new life down under with the man that I intended to marry. But she had other ideas. She decided to arrive just as I arrived in Australia. So um, lovely Bella and I share an anniversary, her of life and me of a new life. So it's rather fantastic. So it's, it's quite beautiful that I'm here using the Australian um, native flowers on the anniversary that I arrived in Australia. Now, I really am enjoying putting these materials together. Again, I've clustered the paper daisies to really give them a little bit of emphasis to really create a focal area so your eye rests on the beautiful round, roundness of the flower but the gentleness of their colour form. I'm only going to use a little bit of this beautiful foliage um, just because um, it's, um, it's quite a busy foliage which means that um, the design might lose a little bit of visual impact. Now what I've done there is started at the base of my material rather than clipping the top. Um, I've also been a florist um, globally. I started my training in Kent in England and moved around. And one thing you don't do as a as, as junior florist is clip all the top material off the greenery because the senior florist can get a little bit cranky. So we always start at the bottom because then we've got this beautiful tall form that we can use in another design later. 
So always remember to try and get the most out of all of your materials. I'm removing the lower section. I, I didn't actually have many foliage to remove off this lower section of any of my materials um, so far, but always try and remove the lower leaf of your materials so that there's no greenery that's going to be in the water. If you do, it doesn't. It um, makes the, the water cloudy and um, quite um, opaque, and it, it, it won't last as long. The materials won't last as long. So creating more height with this beautiful foliage around my banksias, and then placing it through. Again, those lovely pastel shades that we've got through this design are really repeated through, and you can see that we've got some beautiful movement. Now, again, I think a little bit, I think I could coat just a little bit more, so. I've got the magic number five for this one. So using five placements of the foliage through the design, you might know through reading your books or going through other training that um, odd numbers are the magic florist friend. So we tend to use um, three or five or seven just to help the design flow. So we've got some lovely movement going on there. Now, there we go. I felt it was sticking up a little bit too much there. One of the most delightful flowers that um, I've come across here is the flannel flower. And this is a beautiful, again, I wish you could be here and touch these flowers. Another velvet, beautiful, gentle material that just um, grows wild around the, um, the bushland around Sydney. Don't go picking any because you'll get into an awful lot of trouble, but just admire the beauty and admire the, the fact that the flowers come up and are just willowy and they just, even <laughs> in the harsh climate that, we, that um, Australia has, I was, I was very fascinated with the fact that they have such beautiful, delicate material. Um, and today is, is a 35 degree day, it's high humidity, and yet these beautiful, gentle flowers will survive and um, cope with coming out of the rocks and the crevices in and around um, the, the New South Wales area. So again, placing them in the design. This material is um, another, it's a, a relation of the paper daisy, but it's called a straw flower. Now the botanical name is a wonderful tongue twister, so I will ask the beautiful ladies that are attending um, the webinar to place the names of this material for you. And you can see how it just has this delicacy of um, star shape to it, which will repeat the star shape of the flannel flowers in the design. Now what I'm doing is I'm placing the stem very gently through my construction um, into one of the water vials, so I'm actually concentrating quite a lot here um, so that I don't miss the target. Now, I was trying to think of a, a competition title for this, if anybody was thinking, but anything that says Australian natives necessary, which, um, or including Australian natives, um, this would be um, a lovely design to create for that. Um, Maybe it looks like very much like the landscape, Australian landscape, but oh. of course landscapes you don't do in bottles, but in an actual material, but looks very much like an Australian landscape. So if you didn't hear that, an Australian landscape design, which I think is, is, is wonderful. Um, it's a wonderful depiction. Um, I, I have made it more of a contemporary design, 
because I've used the bottles, not um, flower foam. I do find that flannel flowers and some of the Australian natives really don't enjoy being in um, flower foam because there's not enough, even though it's, it's sort of a uh, contradiction, they come from a very dry and arid um, country. They do like a lot of water. So they do like to be hydrated. They do like the stems to be cut regularly so that um, the, there's a, a clean point of contact with all of the, the flower stems so that they are kept nice and hydrated. So the flower foam doesn't uh, necessarily provide enough hydration for the flowers. I've also kept a couple of the water vials empty, but what I might do, I guess, I'm just turned it round so that um, I can actually see the front of it like you were, um, and I can see that I just need um, a flannel flower to just bring that white through, so I'm just gently getting that beautiful flannel flower down in that design. Oh, so pretty. So pretty, so delicate. Thank you, thank you, Craig. I'm really enjoying working with these beautiful materials. Now, more is more? No, yes, more is more. It's just wonderful. So again, working on the strong yellow, but just adding a little pop of another yellow through the design, just to create harmony and unity. So what we've got here is another little delicate um, straw flower, everlasting. Um, so on your wish list, when you can travel, um, is to come across to Australia and come in spring or even come in summer and enjoy going through and seeing all of the Australian natives that we have growing. Um, one of the fabulous trips, which is still on my to-do list, is to go to Western Australia and to travel across the Nullarbor Plain in the springtime so that um, I can actually see all these beautiful materials growing in their thousands um, in the Australian bushland. I'm sure some of you are saying, oh yes, it was fabulous, I went there last year. And it was just like, yes. Um, do tell me all about your trip and where to go and who to see and what to do because um, I, I really would like to, to, to join in the, the gang that can say that, oh yes, I've been there, seen they've done that. So, um, so what we might do, again, I do like to group materials. Um, I like the fact that um, the strength in numbers really gives um, a bold, a boldness to a dessert with um, the material size. So, and the yellow banksias are a very strong visual weight to the design. So by helping the yellow just come through now, I've got a, a Billy Button that I'm, Mr. Billy Button, Mr. Craspedia. If you're, if you're naughty, you're a Miss Craspedia rather than a Billy Button when you're um, just like you are at home. There we go. That's where I wanted it to go. So adding a little bit of height. Are you enjoying this? Are you going ooh and ah? I wish you were here. I think it's it's lovely having um, an audience, but I'm glad you're safe and um, I'm hoping that you're enjoying and being inspired by the designs I'm making today. Okay. I could go on, but I'm going to stop. So I'm going to move this out of the way. And this is my second piece for your perusal. Thank you.